Shalom to everyone. We are learning today <coughs> Zera Shimshon Parashat Mas'ei Lerechet. And today's learning should be Leilu Nishmat Ilowu Ilusha Ben Osnat Abramov Ruach Hashem Tenichenu Baganeda. And today is already nine months how <coughs> he left this world. He was big tzaddik. Tzaddik is so long. Gemara says, if somebody passes away and nobody cries for that person, that person goes to Gainam. Why? You couldn't make the one person happy in your life. You couldn't find space in anybody's heart. So when people like Meloy Lowu come to the Yushua, Levaya, and make other people cry because of crying of other people, this deceased person goes to Gan Eden. So this is how many people went to Gan Eden because of the hood of Eliyahu, Eliyahu Abramov. Second thing, second thing, how many weddings he did? How many bar mitzvahs, breed millers? For years and years, they, were, they would be partners. They together one team with Avram Talmasov in Samarkand, more than 20, 25 years. And they went there in America, Ristanan Sagdiana, he was the owner. He, Samarkand, he did so many, many happy occasions. Joshua Baganeden Bosha, Ruach Hashem Tenechenu Baganeden. Same thing today, Leilu Nishmat, our father, Elaud Mikra, Elusha Ben Bachmal, Ruach Hashem Tenechenu Baganeden, Bezad Hashem, tomorrow night in Prestige, Restaurant Prestige, Glad Kosher. There is Yeshua of our father, we would like to see there everyone. Please come and <coughs> support our family in this occasion. Number three, today also we would like to say thank you for amazing food prepared by restaurant Versailles, uh, Versailles Palace and this learning should be also in Zuhut of Nadia Nekadam Bat Zulai. Hashem should give her a fashalema, leidakala, briyut, atzlacha. And she's amazing, amazing person, amazing food, amazing catering. We did last week Brit Mila there. She did amazing food and she didn't charge us as much. She did a lot of chesed and today she's sponsoring the shiur. Hashem should give her besorot to her, her entire family. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and also, uh, in a few days, there's uh, some court case, and they, Be'ezad Hashem, there'll be Matzliach. Yeah. We're also learning for Zuchut of Pinchas ben Chana and Emilia Ima Shalom bat Sivia Sima. Hashem should give them Besorot Tovot, and Be'ezad Hashem, everything will be good with Zuchut of Torah learning, Gemara, Zera Shimshon, and uh, supporting. Many, many families, when they have hard time, Mr. Pinchas and his wife, uh, Ima Shalom, Hashem should give them Besorot Tovot V'cheni Ratzom Anomar, Amen. And the Fashem Al-Chol Chol Amor Yisrael B'Chlalam, Natanel Ben David V'cheni Ratzom Anomar, Amen. Don Gavadel Ben Yinam. Okay, let's start Zera Shimshon. Before we go to Zera Shimshon, I would like to introduce you into Gemara, <coughs> Yoma page 69b, Samechtet Amud Bet. If you want to take my advice, if you learn through Arsul Gemara or regular Gemara or Russian Gemara, any Gemara you learn, look inside in Gemara page 69b, Gemara Yoma. It says over there, have. Uh, Gemara says how Jewish nation made Hashem's name great by making Kiddush Hashem. And by Tzakuel Hashem Elokim Bekol Gadol. My Amor, Amara, Vitem Rabbi Yochanan, Baya. Baya, on a Bukharin, we say in Bukharin, Biyo, Biyo, you know, Baya, Baya, they were crying when <coughs> we had first temple, first temple got destroyed by whom? Nebuchad? Netzar. Then Jewish people were exiled to Babel and Paras, right? After 70 years of destruction of Yerushalayim, we came back. We came back, who brought us back? 
Ezra Sofer. And Ezra Sofer, when he already entered Beit HaMikdash, he sees Satan, Yetzer Hara, is still dancing around. Today, we don't know what means idol worshipping. Olden times, people would take their children, they make fire, and they would let their children go there and burn for idol. La Molech. Sacrifice. Or oh, people would sacrifice themselves for idols. They were... People would stand online to do idol worshipping. Today we don't have this stuff. Why we don't have this stuff? Because Ezra Sofer saw how this Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination of idol worshipping is still around. So what they did, they went, all of them, and they started crying and said, come, come. They fasted three days. After fasting three days, Hashem said, what do you want? They said, we want to undo the power of idol worshipping Hashem gave them paper from Shamaim. paper fell down was written what on it? Emet, three letters first letter of the Torah, Aleph last letter, letter is Tav and the middle letter Emet, Mem Emet is Hashem's signature Hashem said Emet go do it they said oh Hashem is agree with us, let's do it they fasted three days, after three days they came to the Kodesh Kodashim and they said Bia Bia okay what happened? This idol worshipping destroyed first Beit Hamikdash, first temple, and then caused Hechal, Parochet, to be burned, and then caused Tzadikim to get slaughtered, and then Jewish nation were thrown out from Israel. So after all this, they got so upset. What is this that we cannot undo the power of idol worshipping? What's going on here? So they went to Kodesh Kodashim and they said this phrase. They start praying and as they prayed, they cried. After fasting three days, what happened is this idol worship came out from the, the, the Yetzer Harav, I don't worship, came out from behind Kodesh Kodashim. When it came out, they said, what are you going to do with it? So they said, take it to the, you know how I say Svinets? Svinets? Lead. Thank you. They said, take lead box. When you make something out of metal, metal, noise could go through. Plastic for sure could go through. When you do out of lead, Svinets, Korhochin. When you do something out of lead, you yell. What is not going to go through? And even X-ray doesn't go through. Oh, thank you. Now I see the X-ray. Why people with, were uh, lead. Why? Because lead doesn't get nothing through. Okay? So what happened is, they said, take this Yetzer Hara of idol worshipping and stick inside the lead box. lead box and smash it with lead. So no noise should come out. Okay? Because when it screamed once, it screamed 400 miles. When it screamed 400 miles, they, the rabbis got scared. Rabbis got scared that the Yetzirah of Avodah Zarah, of idol worshipping, screamed 400 miles. They said, wow, because it has such a long, loud voice, maybe God will have mercy. So let's put this lead on top. Quiet it down to make sure no voice comes up. So what happened? They won it. They won. Baruch Hashem, today we don't have it. So they said, guys, if already we got power of Yetzer Hara for Avodah Zarah, for idol worshipping, let's destroy the Yetzer Hara, uh, the power of, of uh, lust. How you say lust? Adultery. 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 Promiscuity. They said, Let's take it away also Yetzirah for that. So they took Yetzirah for that. And they wanted to also destroy it. When they wanted to destroy it, they said, wait one, two days. Wait, let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> then that Yetzirah said, listen, you want to destroy me? The world will not continue anymore. That day, in the whole Yerushalayim, they couldn't find one egg. Why? Rooster did not look at chicken. 
No man had desire. Nobody had desire. They couldn't find one egg. Guys, we all grew up in Russia. You could have thousand eggs even without rooster being in your house. Right. So what, what, so what does that mean? There's no egg. The answer is, when somebody gets sick, you give chicken egg, it's good. But when you give chicken egg, when there is a rooster, that, that egg cures. You know why? Because when chicken looks at the rooster and gets hot, inside, excited, gets warm, that egg has more effect to cure somebody. That's one answer. Second answer, you're right, there is a rooster. You're right, you could have chickens there. But you know the second reason is, if you don't have a rooster in your house, you could have eggs, but that egg will not fertile. So they wanted to find egg that will fertile. When there's no rooster, rooster doesn't look at chicken. It didn't fertile. But you know what you could tell me? If let's say I had rooster today, it made shiduch with the chicken, and then I made shchita to rooster, how many days my chicken could have eggs that could hatch? I don't know. How many? <coughs> don't forget. Three days. Seven days. Seven days. You could have the rooster in your house for one day. After one day it mates with chickens. You made shchita, seven days, all those eggs you could put in the incubator. Those eggs will hatch. How long it takes to hatch? How long it takes to hatch? You? 20 seconds. Huh? Oh, 20 Embarrassing, yeah? <laughs> Coach, come on. How many? Three days. Exactly three weeks. Oh. Why three weeks? To teach Jewish nation a lesson. The three weeks that we have sorrow. Don't put your head down fully. From 17 of Tammuz till Tisha B'Av, we're holding in these three weeks. That's the three weeks when Jewish nation will raise up. You take an egg, you put three weeks in the incubator. Comes out what? Comes out a chick. Same thing, you take a Jew. After he makes Teshuva and Kapara for three weeks, comes out a Jewish nation after Tisha B'Av. So let's go a little bit deeper to this. So what happened is, they closed it, they saw. No, so they said, Hashem help us. Hashem help us to, to make it have way. Strong, have way, take the power away. Yetzirah said, you cannot undo me for halfway. You know why? Because if halfway you desire your wife, halfway you don't desire, she's not going to get pregnant. Why? Because you can't get pregnant, have pregnancy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they saw the world cannot continue. So they said, Hashem, give us advice. They said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to poke the eye of Yetzirah. So they poke the eye. When they poke the eye of evil inclination of the last, you know what happened? The world stopped since then. The world stopped when people would do incest. Sins with incest? That the time will stop. Today already, today already, when people are born and they grow, they already know. It's like a nature of the person. Oh, you're not allowed to, to live with your close relative. But before that, it was very terrible. Before they undo the power of Yetzirah of lust, it was terrible. The world was very terrible. So, since the second temple, with this what happened, I mean, among Jewish people, after we got the Torah from Har Sinai, it was uplifted, as Gemara Shabbat says, right? But Goim, it was very terrible. And after second temple began working when Ezra Sofer and all the other Chachamim poked the eye of Yetzirah, it changed. It changed, come down. This is all introduction. I know it was a little bit longer introduction than usual, but, but what are we gonna do now? In the time of the second temple, we'll see how 120 rabbis, among them prophets, they established the text of Shmon Israel. The text of Shmona Yisrael, that we pray Amida, Shacharit, Micharit, we pray quietly. Who established the text? 120 rabbis. How do we call them? The men of a great assembly. Why do we call them the men of a great assembly? Because who was the first person in the world said, Ha'el, Hagadola, Gibor, Manora? We say Shmona Yisrael. Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu, 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 Avraham. Ha'el, Hagadola, Gibor, Manora. Who said first? Moshe Rabbeinu said. Hashem, you are Gadol. Big, Gibor, strong, Nora, great. 
these three phrases Moshe Rabbeinu said first as soon as first temple got destroyed second temple got destroyed it was taken away until I'm sorry I'm sorry not second temple first temple got destroyed Korbanot stopped it was taken away they just said O Gadol O Gibor O Nora but when men of a great assembly established hundred to one, uh, I'm sorry, 120 rabbis established Shmona Yisrael, Shmona Yisrael, they brought it back. They brought the phrase back into the place. What do we call them? You did a man of a, you did a job of a great man of Moshe Rabbeinu. This is why we call them men of a great assembly. Mm-hmm. Because they brought the respect of Hashem. Hashem, you are big, strong, and great. They brought it back. Now, after this introduction, we could go inside. Let's look inside. Zera Shimshon. Why did we start learning Zera Shimshon? Those who are here first time, I want to give you an introduction. We began learning this Sefer because many couples, many people, had a hard time having children. Or some people had children, then children would get sick many times. Or some people had really physical problems. As we start learning this book, why? Because this rabbi lived 300 years ago, and he said, whoever learns my book, as if he's saying Kaddish to me, because his son passed away in his lifetime. He said, if you say, if you learn my book, as if you're saying Kaddish to me, and I'll pray for you from Shamaim, you will have open miracles. And I will make open miracles for you in this world and in the world to come. He said it openly. And Baruch Hashem, since the day, that we start learning Zed Shimshon, we have so many miracles come up. I didn't even know today we're going to have sponsors, Abramov family, Versalis, uh, uh, the other uh, Mr. Pinchas, Ben Hana, the other people to come and support Shurim. It's, it's unbelievable. And I myself, last week on this day when I teach Shur, I had baby two weeks ago, and last week we had Brit on, on the day which we usually give Shur. So what I'm trying to tell you is it's amazing. A lot of people who had hard time getting married for years, they got married. They got married. Baruch Hashem, there's many miracles happen, and there's many, many, many miracles are coming soon to happen. Bezad Hashem, Let's learn together. Zera Shimshon. Let's go. Yoma Perek Zayin, Gemara Yoma, Chapter Seven, Page Sixty Nine B. Moshe Amar, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Ha'el, Hagadol, Hashem, you are great, big, Gibor, great. I'm sorry, strong. Vanora, awesome, great. Ata Yirmiya. Yirmiya came and said, What? Hashem, they're praising you so much. Bet Amikdash got destroyed. I see Goim walking there, dancing in Bet Amikdash. Hashem, I could tell you, great? After this, so much happened to us? Amar, Goim Meragdim Bechalo. Goim dancing in Hashem's uh, Bet Amikdash, holy temple. Ayenor Otav. Where is his, his awesomeness? That Hashem is great. I'm not going to say Hashem is great. Why? Because as long as this Goyim there dancing around in a holy temple, and I cannot go there. Even Kohen cannot go there anytime. Only Kohen could enter there, Kodesh Kodashim, and Yom Kippur once. And here Goyim get inside there and dance. That's not greatness of Hashem. They shaming Hashem. I'm not going to say Nora. Lo Amar Nora. Ata Daniel, question to all of you, where is Daniel Amalach, Daniel Anavi Berry? Samarkand, according to some opinions, right? Daniel Anavi, he was in Yerushalayim, Bed Amikdash got destroyed, he was kicked out to Babylonia, from there to Persia, from there to Bukhara, from there to Samarkand. And he's buried in Samarkand, 10, 12 meters, his grave, very big grave. Ata Daniel, Came Daniel Anavi, Omar, Goyim Mishtavadim, Bebanav, Ayegevurotav. Huh? He says, Goyim are making Jewish people slaves. Where is Hashem's greatness? I will say, Hashem, you great? Why? Why? What? Is they trying to hurt Hashem? What are they trying to do? The answer is, Hashem says, when my son is suffering, I'm suffering with him. Imoan Ochi Betzara. So he says, Hashem, for me to say you're great now, when Jewish nation are suffering, they're being killed left and right, they're being thrown like shmata here, there. I cannot say, like Holocaust, right? Holocaust, Hashem is great. Hashem is suffering with them. So you can say Hashem is great, right? Lomar Gibor. So Daniel said, 
didn't say gibor. He said Hashem Ha'el Hagadol. No gibor, no nora. The kasha, it's difficult. The habi meir miyao necher avapait. Yir miyao, you are worried that goyim dancing in a holy temple. You don't want to say nora. You don't want to say Hashem. You are awesome, but. Beit Hamikdash got destroyed in his eyes, in his time. Why are you saying Gibor, Hashem, you are great, strong, mighty. You are mighty. He says, Hashem, you are mighty. Doesn't say, Hashem, you are great. Why? Because go him dancing in the holy temple. But Beit Hamikdash got destroyed in, your, in front of your eyes. Why are you saying strong even? Don't say you are, you are strong, you are mighty. Don't say that. Don't say nothing. Don't praise Hashem. Also, Daniel shouldn't have said nothing. Why did he say Hashem is big, great, and not awesome? Why? Each rabbi says one praise, but not second praise. Guys, you are with me or no? Yes. I'll give you a simple hint. If you praise Hashem, praise fully. If you don't praise Hashem, don't praise at all. Bet Amikdash got destroyed. So don't praise. No, I want to say Gibor. I want to say Nora. You want to say something? Say both. Why are you saying only one thing? What they are looking at, what hurts them the most? I'll give you a hint before we go further. One rabbi holds, if we don't have Beit HaMikdash, I don't care. If we don't have Korbanot sacrifice, I don't care. But if we don't have Torah learning continuation, that's what bothers me, he says. Second rabbi says, even though we have Torah learning, but we don't have sacrifices anymore, nobody can walk sin free. Clean, without no dirt, without no tum'ah, spiritual dirt. That's what bothers me. So one rabbi is being bothered by, by learning Torah, and one rabbi is being bothered from bringing korba. Not. Now let's look inside. Fifteen minutes will be done, because introduction covers everything. But these fifteen minutes, guys, I promise you, the Torah learning that you stop the whole world, and you come, you have no idea the reward you get. When Rabbi Akiva was teaching his students, one of them dozed off, he said, come over here, I want to tell you something. He said, yes, what? Rabbi, what? He said, because Sarah was tzadeket 127 years, Esther, her great-great-granddaughter, by Achashverosh, was queen for 127 provenance. Cities. When you come to learn Torah now, one hour, you make your children, grandchildren to have one block in 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Two hours, two blocks. What do you think Level Alive became Level Alive because of? His grandfather, when they used to put rabbis in jail, his grandfather would go and sit and learn Torah. This is how you make your family great. When you learn Torah, she says, I give you land, real estate. Why? Because that's real. You're dealing with something real. When you learn Torah, don't look at it cheap. Torah makes you rich. Let's go further. Ubesef, <laughs> first time for three years learning Zerah Shimshon, I see how first time Zerah Shimshon quotes his own book. Zerah Shimshon quotes his own book. He says, Ubesefer Toldot Shimshon. And in the book Toldot Shimshon, Sheli said, my book, Al Masechet Avot. Look in the Gemara Masechet Avot, in Mishnah Masechet Avot, Perash Tisham, I explained there, the Elu Ashloshato Arim Hem Kneget Shloshat Varim. Ha'el, we pray, everyone pray Shmon Aisra, who doesn't pray Shmon Aisra here? Everyone pray Shmon Aisra, right? Do we say Ha'el, Ha'gadol, then? Ha'gibor, Manola. Why do we say three things? Because of three things the world is standing there, as Shimshon says. What are the three things? This is that, what? Shalom, Omed Al Shloshat Varim, Torah, Avodah, Gemilut Chasadim. Torah stays 
the world stands on Torah, learning avodah, sacrifices, which is prayer, and gemilut chasadim, doing kindness. Torah stands because of three things. Now, how do you connect them? Nora, gadol, gibor, nora, right? Nora is Torah. Hashem is great, awesome. That's Torah. Gibor, Hashem is strong, mighty. That's avodah. Sacrifices. Hashem Gadol, Hashem is great, that is Gemilut Chasadim, doing kindness. The three things the world is standing because of. You know what? If somebody comes and says, Guys, I'm a big rabbi. I know the whole Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu said, I like Gadol, I three things. I want to add five more. Can he do that or no? Why not? Gemara Brachot, you're not allowed to add. You're not allowed. No, not not allowed to add. How can you cap it? What's to say it's only this much? It could be much more. Exactly. For you to cap Hashem's greatness. Exactly. So anytime you add something, you really use subtracting from greatness of Hashem. So Moshe Benu just said three. Why? Because of the three things the world is standing. He said, Hashem, I just can't mention three things, the three pillars the world is standing. Torah, Avodah, Gnut, Chasadim, but I cannot go more than this. Why? If I go more, even if I say hundred billion, it's still less. Because I'm diminishing from your greatness, Hashem. Therefore, I'm going to say just three for the pillars of the world. That's all. So anyone, he is the only place that you could see. The first place that you could see is anytime I add, I really subtract. Your father has million dollars. You say, Abba, I love you because you have hundred dollars. Why are you embarrassing me? I have million, tell me I have hundred. Same thing. This is exactly what it means. Hashem, you have only four categories. Oh, only five. No, Moshe Abedu said three, not because of you, because the world standing on three pillars. But really, Hashem ain't soft. There's no end to your greatness. Let's go further. Hutzach Moshe. And you cannot add nothing to this. And Hashem is great. That is for kindness that Hashem does. Can you imagine how many times Hashem does kindness to us? It's so hard outside. You think, oh, air, stop. When you took air, where did the air go? Where did the air go? Lungs here, there. Hashem makes kidney go away, liver go away, kishki here, this and that. And Hashem says, okay, safely come in, now safely come out. Baruch Hashem, kol haneshama, ta'alele, kol haneshima, every breath I take, Hashem, you do kindness to me, thank you. Gimut chasadim, agibor, Hashem is great, strong, hu neged akorbanot, that is, contemplates, contemplates, how do you say that? Symbol, corresponds, thank you, corresponds the korbanot, sacrifice, vanora, and Hashem is awesome, neged Torah. Hashem gave us Torah, what's Torah? Can anyone t- come in here and say, I know the whole Torah? Never. Torah is so endless. deep. There's endless. But it's all true. Torah is true. That's the only thing in life. When you have a lot, it doesn't hurt. Sometimes a lot of money hurts. Sometimes a lot of sugar hurts. Sometimes a lot of salt hurts. Sometimes a lot of swimming holes. Sometimes a lot of running holes hurts. A lot of Torah never hurts. This is why Torah says, I gave you a good business deal. Why it calls good business? Because good transaction. Why? Because there's nothing bad can come out of Torah. Marbe Torah, Marbe Chaim. More Torah, more life. Ve'av, sham kashe. Amai, mar amar chada, omar amar chada. So even here, it's, we are asking questions on Yirmiyahu Anavi and Daniel Anavi. Why one of them holds Gadol? Why one of them holds Nora? Why they don't say both of them on Hashem's greatness? Why ben bimeil miyau ben bimeil Daniel? Tell why it it nu galut ve churban bitul tor ve korbanot during the both of them's time, both of these prophets' times, dead galut, dead churban, Torah learning stopped, sacrifices stopped. So why did they chose only one thing and not the other? Ve yesh lomar, and we could answer. She Yirmiyahu lo chashav kol kach al bitul korban. Yirmiyahu was not so upset. He was upset. He was not so broken down when they brought when they stopped bringing sacrifices. Ela davka al bitula Torah. When they stopped learning Torah, he said, "Now we're in trouble." Do you know? I'll tell you one thing. We t- we look at Holocaust. We don't see big rabbis. You know why? Because when you look at the movie of Holocaust, they already took the rabbi, shaved, skinny. You don't see the big rabbis. One rabbi, I believe his name was. 
Second time we'll write the ticket to you. Be careful. Uh, I, I believe his name was Rabbi Green. Or Green or Greenmach something. Rawadi Yosef says, this guy was saved from Holocaust. He says, you take a needle, hit on any side of the Gemara. He would say on the first page, it's on the letter Gimel. On the sixth page, letter Dalet. On the ninth page, letter Hey. Wow. He knew the whole Gemara and he says, you know what Lawad says? Yeah. He says, I am from 180 students, I was the lowest. Wow. Wow. Last name was Rao when he was coming to Tisha Ba'al, he says, if you don't cry for destroying Beit Mishash, Beit Amikdash, remember the Holocaust. What kind of great people were born, burned and killed just for this cause to cry? It's a great people. So this kind of Torah learning stuff today. Mishum, Sheshama me Akadosh Baruch Hu Sheikar Ra Aba Al Yisrael Aita Al Bitul Torah, because the worst punishment today, today, twenty-six year old guy, Binyaminov, young guy, got sick, passed away today, last week, two weeks ago, the whole month, guys, so many young people passed away. You know why? One reason, Torah learning stopped. Bitul Torah. Dunya Chapesh Tadarabai. Kedichtiv be Yirmiyahu Siman Tet, as it says. In Yirmiyahu chapter 9, Alma Avda Haaretz, why the land is being destroyed. And Hashem answered because they stopped learning my Torah. And also over there in chapter 16, in Yirmiyahu says, Alma, Diber Hashem, Aleinu et kol ara gedola azot. Why was the reason Hashem spoke to us so harshly, so evil? So many evil things. And I said to them, and you said to them, Hashem said, you left me alone, and my Torah you did not keep. My father, today is your time, tomorrow is Yeshua. He would say to me, my son, you come to shul, don't talk about parasha only in shul, don't talk about Allahot only in shul. Try to take a little bit of information outside with you. And my father was a very funny person, very funny person to talk to. He would, when he would say stories, even the gangster would sit and listen. He was, he was talented with this. So what happened is, I said to him, what are you trying to tell me, Abu? I was 13 years old, a little bit chutzpah. He says to me like this, there was a king. And king had one daughter. Came Domot. He said, Chai, what are you going to do for my daughter? He says, me? Ten kurpa, kurpacha, blankets, blankets on top of the blankets, maid servants, everything. Hey, hey, we'll take care of it. So I said, fine, I trust you. He took, he gave him, closed her. Ten maid servants. Father come, king comes. He says, wow, ten maid servants, such a good honor to my daughter. Thank you, thank you. He left. He left. Week later, one maid servant out. Two weeks later, three, five, eight, nine. All maid servants are out. She became the maid. So now... She writes a letter to the father, Abba, my old maid servants are out. All these my room problems I should do myself, but that does not that doesn't bother me. My husband doesn't go out with me. He always locks me in the room. I never come outside. I want to come outside. He says, My daughter, I'm coming in a week. So King comes to visit his daughter. When he comes to visit his daughter, before that, servant got the letter, he showed to the king first, to the to the to the husband, to Domot. He looked at it, he says, uh oh. He went again, bought ten maid servants, brought them back. And every day he started going out with her. Before King comes, he sees going outside here, and there. He says, Ah my daughter, she said, Abba, after that letter, everything is good now. Everything is good. <laughs> my father told me. <clears throat> Do you know how much Sofer Torah gets upset when people come? They talk about Parsha in the shul and they don't take it outside. Sefer Torah says, hey, take my words outside with you. You go outside, take me with you, I'm bored in the shul. When I heard that, I said, wow. It touched me a little bit. But really, it's true. Torah gets upset. Torah says, listen, don't use me only in shul. You go to your store, use me in store. But today, guys, I'll tell you one thing. You know how many businesses in Russia people had? They were scared to put mezuzah. Today, there's no business Jewish person has, there's no mezuzah. Everywhere mezuzah. Everywhere they try to bring a picture of the rabbi. Everywhere they try to be pitum at something. Why? Why? They want to get more and more Torah. More and more Torah. That is the life of Jewish person. Let's go further. 
We have seven minutes to finish, Bezad Hashem. Ve'ita b'ptichta d'chakimi. It says in the ptichta of the Ika Rabbah, in Midrash Rabbah. Matzinu she'vitel ha'kadosh baruch hu al-avodah zara. Hashem said, Jewish nation, you did idol worship, I forgive you. I close my eyes on that. Gilu ya'rayot. You went and you lived with a married woman, Hashem said. I'll close my eyes on that. Shpichud damim, you went to kill people. I'll close my eyes on that. Velo vitel al ma'asa shel Torah. You shamed my Torah. I'm not going to close eyes on that. Shaming Torah. When a person makes fun of Torah. Fun of a religious person. Fun of a person who says Kaddish to his father. Why make fun of him? You know, I had a friend from public school. I was in public school 22 years ago. 23 years ago. I took my friend with me to shoot to Beth Gabriel. Somebody says Kaddish. Ha, 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 he's laughing at him. I said, why are you laughing at him? He says, I'm saying Kaddish first, man. He says, so funny. He's going like this, going like this. Like a, like a mucker, like a clown. I was so embarrassed. I took him with me to shul. Second time I said to myself, I'm not going to take him with me to shul. And a lot of people make fun of religious people who are doing the right thing. He's saying Kaddish to his father. He's making fun of him. He's keeping Shabbat. He's making fun of him. What is it to make fun of? Learn from him. Grow. Get close to Hashem. So much life in Torah. You know you're missing out. The Oti Azvu Hashem said, Ah, you left my Torah, now you left me alone. That I don't forgive. The Halevai Oti Azvu Ve Torati Hashem said, You know what? You leave me alone, I don't care. Don't leave alone my Torah. Can you imagine? Hashem says, You don't love me, I close my eyes. Love my Torah. Si Sidur, kiss it. Si Humash, kiss it. I love you. Even though you don't love me, Hashem says, Love my Sidur. For this, I'll be attached to you. Because you will continue learning Torah, I will return the light. I will come back to you and everything will be into good. Therefore, Yirmiya said, they don't bring sacrifice, I don't care. They don't learn Torah anymore. The Torah learning stopped. He said, that hurts me, he said. Amar Gibor Vlo Amar Nora. Therefore, he said, Hashem, you're great. There are still sacrifices coming. But I'm not going to say you're awesome. Why? Because there's no Torah learning. Shehu. Neged the Torah. Ve'ot she'el me'ek she'amar ha'el ha'gadol. Ve'lo amad nora. Ha'ya b'me tzitkiyahu. She'adayin lo nidbatlu ha'korbanot. And when Yirmiyahu said it, it was during the tzitkiyahu time. I'll tell you one thing. Jew knows such a thing called, I made a promise, I could annul my promise. Neder ha'tarad nederim. Goy does not comprehend this. There was a guy, he was a wishes man, but he said to himself, I want to be terrible. I want to be evil. What was his name? Nebuchad? Netzar. That the king who destroyed the first temple. He got a live rabbit. And he took the rabbit, life. He made a hole inside and he started tearing it and he was biting to eat. Killing it. Life rabbit. Rabbit is moving. Biting, biting, biting. That time, without no permission, without no knocking on the door, comes to him Jewish king Tzidkiyahu. Tzidkiyahu came and saw he got pale. He got pale, he got scared. Why he got scared? Because he said, I see this guy is getting a Hitler exercise how to do that to Jewish people. Do you know Nebuchadnezzar was so crazy, this king. Whenever he would win in the war any king, he would cut their fingers. fingers on the legs and on the hands and he would make table a little bit longer a little bit longer and tall table and he would make fence around it and all these kings that he would win in the war he would throw them under the table and whenever he would eat food he would take the bone and throw to them and he would see how one king was beating each other second king up in order to eat that bone like a dog that was his happiness he was very crazy man Nebuchadnezzar was not normal and when he was eating the rabbit, Tzidkiyahu saw it. He said, come over here. Swear to me you will not tell this to anybody. He said, I swear. When Tzidkiyahu came home, after three days, he would almost die. Why? He said, how can I not prepare my Jewish nation to be aware from this animal? So he said, I cannot not say it. So I went to the rabbi and said, rabbi, I'm dying. Because I'm here holding a secret so heavy, I cannot hold it because it's going to make me fall down. So they said, come, we'll make you an atarad nadarim. They made atarad nadarim and he said, I saw Tzidkiyahu eat a live rabbit. I said, rabbit? Crawling. On Kushal Zewa Crawling. I saw him live, uh, uh, eat a live rabbit. So they said atarad nadarim, but you know, when people hear like this news, ah, Famidi, oh, Chai Von Khor, 
<laughs> and people go like this, like this, like this, like this. Came to Tzitkiyahu. He said, is that true? He said, yeah. Call him up. He called him up. He took and he poked his two eyes. He poked the eyes of yeah. Tzitkiyahu. He said, you Give me a gave out my secret. And he said, who, which rabbis did that to you? He called all the rabbis. He said, there's such a thing. He said, when you shoot the gun, you could put the bullet back. When you promise, how can you undo your promise? Where you got this from? You see, Goy doesn't understand. Nedel, taking Nedel away, Atarad Nedalim. He said like this, he killed all the rabbis. And their blood was boiling for like a long time, no? That's not him. No, that's that's Zacharias. Shegalu. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please. Please. Uh, guys, this is what I'm telling you now. It's something interesting. It's all not me. It's Melo Ilahu Ben Osnats Nashama. Let's go. Amal Torah nit bat lamelz Israel begalu yoyachin when yoyachin was already after Tzidkiyahu. Shegalu hacheresh vamizgar. You know hacheresh mizgar means cheresh is deaf. Mizgar means closed up. There were two rabbis during the second temple time. During, I'm sorry, during the first temple time, there were such a big rabbis. As soon as they opened their mouth to speak Torah, they were so knowledgeable, so sweet. Right away, people were like as if they were deaf. Nobody speaks. Mm. Mute and deaf. And Mizgar was closed up. They were closed up. No knowledge could be standing in front of these knowledges. They were like, that's all zombies. And when these two rabbis were exiled, then already Yirmiyahu start crying for the loss of Torah because these two great men stopped learning. They were exiled. And because of the suffering, Yirmiyahu saw prophecy, four more minutes will be done. Yirmiyahu saw Bet Amikdash, first Bet Amikdash got destroyed. He gave prophecy. After 70 years, Hashem will come back to us. Don't worry, Hashem will rebuild second Bet Amikdash. Hayinu lepikida ba'alma kida amrinam beperek kama de Megillah shechazlu acheres va'mizgar az ledeshe be'etzal aval min abayet Amikdash lo ayah el achad yutchet shanim lemalod lechar lecharvod Yerushalayim. After the destruction of Bet Amikdash, they had to wait 18 more years for the destruction of Yerushalayim. Here on these 18 years, even Yirmiyahu made mistake. <coughs> Everyone was making mistakes. So I want to stop over here and say, huh? You want to finish? Please. Guys, three minutes? Yes. Yeah, because I feel bad. I don't want anybody getting up and leaving because well, I'll, teach you, on, huh? I'll teach you a secret today. Whenever you learn something about learning Torah, as if you learn Torah all your life. When you learn about bringing sacrifices, as if we brought all the sacrifices in the Beit HaMikdash. Oh, so now is the time to learn about sacrifices. Three minutes. I think it's worth it. Let's go. In the back, you can have pop quiz. Ume Ata. And from now, Daniel. Melo Aaron Ben. Daniel. Ume Ata. Daniel Anavi. Leachar. She'amar Ani Daniel. Binoti Besfarim. He says, I am Daniel. Who searched in the books? I calculated all the seventy years. Even he made mistake. Wow. Even he made mistake. The Afihu Manavatana Betaa. Even he counted and made mistake. Can you imagine then why Achashverosh made mistake? Why Baal made mistake? Pavel made mistake? Why made mistake? I don't know. I'm talking about Haman. Haman. Mordechai. Remember, uh, remember Megillah Tester, how it begins? Yeah, yeah. They thought already 70 years is over, they made party, they made mistake. If Yirmiyahu made mistake, I'm so for sure they would make mistake. Daniel made mistake. And they saw that uh, that in future, near future, next year, Next year, Jewish nation, majority of them would come back to Yerushalayim. And uh, years later, the whole Jewish nation came back, uh, majority of Jewish nation came back, and Daryavesh came, and he com completed, completed the building of the Amikdash. So when Daniel saw 
Daniel, our Navi, saw that Jewish nation coming back to his land, he a little bit got relieved. He says, ah, I'm not going to cry for Torah so much. Why? Because Torah is coming back now. So he said, because the Jewish nation majority coming back. Why? Because Dariavesh was whose son? Esther and Malka. Dariavesh was Esther's son. And he, on the 70th year, he gave permission to rebuild Beit HaMikdash. So that time, majority of Jewish nation went back to Israel. Daniel saw that. When Daniel and Avi saw that, he said, ah, I could say now, Ha'el Ha'nora. Not Gibor for Korbanot, but I could say Nora for Torah learning. Why? Because majority went back to learn Torah. Share Ate Ilmidu Atela Bel Israel. Now they're going to learn Torah in Israel. Kamoshe Ketav Aramban. Shelov Israel. V'chol Azan Elim. Achachamim Chazul Al Israel. Kodem Malchud Achashverosh Shebimei Aman. Look at this. Before Achashverosh became king, already majority of the Jewish people went back to Israel. Ramban says. Kamoshe Evi Aran Leshonob Pedekam Ad Megillah. As Lan says in the first chapter Megillah. V'Ain U Mishum Hachi Amar Nora. And therefore Daniel said Nora. Aval Adain Lo Ratzal Lomar Gibor. But he said, I'm not going to say Hashem is great. Why? Even though Jewish people are there, Beit HaMikdash is not fully completed. Can they bring sacrifices? No, no because sacrifice is not there. I'm not going to say Gibor. The fish are there. No, I have no Beit HaMikdash. No Korbanot. No Beit HaMikdash, no Korbanot. Now, last piece. 30 seconds, guys. Put your seatbelts on. One rabbi, Yirmiyahu was suffering for loss of Torah. Daniel was suffering for the loss of sacrifices. Any one of us, when we'll sit and teach about on the floor, I hope we don't sit because soon Mashiach is coming. But if he doesn't, anyone will sit on the floor and say, Hashem, where is that learning Torah during Beit HaMikdash time? Where are the sacrifices? Any one of us will have that pain? That's the question we could ask ourselves this year. Ve'od, yesh lo ma'ashayot she Daniel ra'ashe bechol she bavel zakhta l'ilmod u'lamed We could say even another answer. Do you know when the Jewish nation were thrown from Israel, even in Babylonia, they didn't sit like this. They wrote Talmud Bavli. Talmud Bavli, they did where? In Babylonia. During the 70 years, right? No? So when Daniel saw in Babylonia the learning Torah, he says, I could say no Ra because I see Talmud Torah. Hear me out, didn't see that. Therefore, he was not worried so, so much for Torah of Israel. But he was suffering for Korbanot. Because sacrifices, they are making the world perfect and fixing the person from his sins. Everyone sins. Korbanot makes clean, takes away all your sins. And also, we found Shaya Zahir Arbe bit Fila. Therefore, he was careful. A person has to be very careful on Tfila. Mishum, the Tfilot Kneget Temidin Tiknum. We should be very careful with the Tfila. Why? Our praying is bringing sacrifice. When you pray, as if you brought the sacrifice. Hashem should help us to pray. Don't rush in the prayer. Concentrate in the prayer, connect Amen. ourselves with the prayer, and Hashem we should answer all our prayers. Sol Molo Eleo Benekikzila, Sol Molo Avraham Ben Dora Benekikzila, your father was big tzaddik, Ruach Hashem, and Chen Baganed. Your father. Chenir Tsom and Amal Amen. Bezat Shem, Yeshua, my father also tomorrow, Benekikzila, Chenir Tsom and Amal Amen.